Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Mr. P signing in, uh, helping you out with your Honors Secondary Math 2, Section 13.10, uh, Independence in Probability. So the probability of independent events. You might want to review Module 12 before starting this lesson. I don't know. It's up to you. It wasn't that long ago. So the probability of independent events. Two events, A and B, are independent events if and only if the probability that both events occur is the product of the probability of the events. So for example, getting a tails twice is and you know, those getting a tails is independent of getting a tails beforehand because the probability of getting a tails and a tails, remember, would be tailors, tails, 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 heads, heads, tails, heads, heads. It's one out of four chances that you get tails twice. And that is, in fact, equal to the probability of getting a tails, one half, times the probability of getting a tails, one half. That's why that's independent. So the probability of two dependent events, if two events A and B are dependent events, then the probability that both events occur is the product of the probability by the, uh, of the first event and the conditional probability of the second event given the first event, that is, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of A given B, where this thing is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. More on that in just a moment. Previously, we've talked about independence between two events, one happening after the other, and how independence between two events means that one does not depend on the other. However, independence can also be of two events, not just one after the other, but instead of the other. Okay, so Liz has one red shirt, one blue shirt, one red hat. Let's go ahead and draw these things, because otherwise I'm going to mess this up. One red shirt. So... One weirdly shaped red shirt, one red hat, one red pair of pants. I can't say I've seen too many red pairs of pants out there, but hey, and one blue pair of pants. So let's get the blue stuff. She's got a blue shirt. Oh, sweet, it's a turtleneck. And one blue scarf. And one blue pair of pants. Jeans or something. Okay, so... Let A be the probability that she chooses a red garment. So the probability of choosing a red garment is three out of six. There are three red garments out of the six, which reduces to a half. And the probability of B is that she chooses a shirt. Now there's two shirts out of the six, which reduces to one third. So the question is, is the probability of A and B, that is red and a shirt, equal to the probability of a uh, red garment times the probability of a shirt. Well, the probability of A and B, there is only one red shirt, so there's only one out of the six options. And we're asking, is that equal to the probability of A, which is one half the probability of picking something that's red, times the probability of B, which is one third, which reduces to, well, one times one is one, two times three is six, one six. So one six equals one six, so these are independent events. Independent events after all. Yay! Out of six cards, there are three with a black symbol, two with an eight, and both of the eights also have a black symbol. If B is the event of getting a black symbol, and E is the event of getting an eight, tell us the two events are independent. So let's draw six cards. I can take it off dashed for the first time in for a long time. One. Two, three, four, five, six. And so there are three with a black symbol, two of which I know are eight. There's an eight and an eight and something else. 
And the other ones have something else entirely. I'm assuming it's a deck of playing cards. We'll go red, but it actually doesn't matter. So if B is the event of getting a black symbol and E is the event of getting an 8, tell if they're independent. So if the probability of E, B, excuse me, is getting a black card, which is 3 out of 6, which is 1 half, and the probability of E is getting an 8, which is 2 out of 6, which is 1 third, that's looking familiar. The question is, is the probability of a and B equal to the probability of, oh, excuse me, B and E equal to the probability of B times the probability of E. So the probability of getting B and E, that is a black card that is an 8, there's 2 out of the 6, which reduces to a third. So we're asking, is 1 third equal, question mark, to one half times one third. That's the probability of B times the probability of E, which would say that one third is it equal to uh, one six. And that's not true. So these are not independent events, or they're just dependent. Was that a double negative? And if you're better at English than I am, then maybe you know that feels like not independent feels like a double negative, which makes me sad. So let's find conditional probability. At a high school football game, 80% of the spectators buy a beverage at the concession stand, and only 20% of the spectators buy both a beverage and a food item. What is the probability that a spectator who bought a beverage also buys a food item? That is, what is the probability What is the probability of food given beverage? Fib, but I'm not lying. Ah, anyway, and the probability of something given one else is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A, the second thing. So that is the probability of food and beverage divided by the probability of the beverage, which in this case, the probability of a food and beverage is 20%, 0.2 divided by the probability of just a beverage, which is 0 0.8. Now 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.8 is 0 0.25, or 25%. Very good. Let's take a look at this one. The probability that a stock increases in value on a Monday is 60%. When the stock increases in value on Monday, the probability that the stock increases on a value on Tuesday is 80%. What's the probability that the stock increases in value on both Monday and Tuesday of a given week? So again, our probability of a Monday increase is equal to 60%. And the probability of a Tuesday given a Monday is, six, is 80%. So now we have to use this thing. So we know that 80%, the probability of a Tuesday given a Monday, is equal to the probability of a Tuesday and a Monday, which we don't know, divided by the probability of uh, the Monday. That is 0 0.8 equals bleh, over 0 0.6. Multiply both sides by 0 0.6 and you get the probability of it increasing on a Monday and Tuesday is equal to 0 0.6 times 0 0.8 is 0 0.48, or 48%. There's a 48% chance that it'll do both. Very good. There's an alternative approach to this. Two events A and B are independent of the conditional probability of B P, the probability of B given A is the probability of B, or the probability of A and B over the probability of A is given B. So let's get back to that blue, sh red shirt, blue shirt. Oh, I don't want to draw all those again. I'm going to write it down. Red shirt, blue shirt. 
red hat, blue scarf, red pants, blue pants. Somebody cue Dr. Seuss over here. Okay, so we're going to check if these are true. So the probability of A and B of picking a red shirt is still one out of six. So the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A had better be the same as the probability of B because we know these are independent. The probability of A and B is one sixth over the probability of A, just a red, is one, two, three out of six, which is one half. And that had better be equal to the probability of B, which is picking a shirt, which is two out of six, which is one third. We figured that out last time. Now, one six divided by one half. Remember, you keep the first the same. You flip the second. You change the mode, which is two six which is one third. So this reduces to one third equals one third, and that's true. So this is still independent. Which sounds like a campaign slogan, doesn't it? Out of six cards, there were three with a black. Okay, so you've got a black eight, a black eight, a black question mark, a who knows what color. We're assuming red, assuming red, assuming red. Okay. So again, we're going to check if this is true. The probability of A and B is the true that the probability of A and B. Oh, I got the letters wrong again. Oh. The probability of B and E divided by the probability of the first thing and the second thing. The first. Probability of E or of B, which is uh, the probability of B. Is that equal to the probability of E? Actually, I don't think the order matters. Okay, so let's check if that is the case. So the probability of A and B and E is two out of the six possibilities. And if we divide that by the probability of B, which is one out of the, or three out of the six, is that equal to the probability of E, two out of the six, which is, yeah, two out of six. So we're going to reduce these. That is, is one third divided by one half equal to one third? And I hope you can see that that's probably not going to be the case, but one third divided by one half is equal to one third times two over one, which is two thirds, which means this reduces to two thirds. And we're wondering, is two thirds equal to one third? And it turns out that is not true. So this is, they are dependent events. They are not independent. Oh, no. Well, I guess it's not really bad if the events are dependent or not. But what are you going to do? That's what I got for you folks on independence and probability. I hope you learned a bunch. If you have any questions, make sure you send a message to your instructor. This is Mr. P signing off, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.